glorious. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunpla review and today I'm taking a look at the absolute beast that is the real grade Sazabi. Of course, once again, this video right here would not be possible if it wasn't for those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you want one of these magnificent beasts of your own, then check out that link down in the description. So wasting no time and moving right into the aesthetics, this kit is absolutely gorgeous. The proportions on this version of Sazabi look amazing and personally I feel everything about this kit is bang on. Compared to the Master Grade, I feel it is much closer to the original design than the Master Grade is. And that goes for color too. What we've got here is a more striking crimson than what we've seen before, but still not quite as burning red as the 1988 movie. On top of that then, the decals also look amazing. Sure, there are no water slides, but what we do have is those awesome real grade silver ones, those fitted surface decals we're used to at this point, as well as an awesome gold Neo Xeon symbol from the shield. Speaking of the gold decal, we also get this one in here as well if you want to keep it true to the original. One absolutely awesome aspect about this kit is most of the parts are undergated, which means all those parts you nip off are underneath what you'll see. And just to prove just how well designed this kit is, I deliberately didn't clean up anything. Nothing at all. This is just nipped off the runners and put together. This right here is model kit design at its absolute finest. Honestly, I could go on for hours and hours about just how fantastic this thing looks. All the tiny details, the incredible engineering, how it outshines the Master Grade in pretty much every aspect. But we all know a picture is worth a thousand words and you can see for yourself that this thing is quite literally a masterpiece. Also, size comparison time. Here it is next to the Master Grade Sazabi, the Master Grade Granddaddy Gundam, the High Grade Gundam 00 Diver, the Real Grade Sinenju, and the Real Grade 00. So this right here is one big boy. Moving along onto the accessories, and this is a kit right here that will not leave you disappointed. As for manipulators, we've got a non-articulated pair of fists, a non-articulated pair of open hands, a pair of holding hands which feature articulation at the wrist, this is just flexion and extension, no side to side, and a beam shot rifle holding hand, this is just a right hand, and this again has an articulated wrist. Onto the weapons now, and the beam shot rifle looks savage. What we've got here is a nice black with red detailing and some grey parts. We've got a green foil seal on there for the camera, probably the biggest letdown about it. Would have been nice to see some clear parts. The handle pivots back and forward, the magazine can pop out, and we've even got some action. Awesome. Especially with that little silver decal under there as well. These are some nice details. Next up then we have two beam saber handles. These are just for holding in the hands, they don't actually slot into the wrists. The ones in the wrist are essentially just the tips of beam sabers. The beams themselves are incredible looking. Very pigmented clear green here. These are incredibly striking in person. Next up then is the beam tomahawk. This can use the regular beams like a beam saber, these smaller axe beams on the side, and then these absolutely huge axe beams. That is one hell of a weapon right there. As for the shield, just like the rest of the kit, this looks absolutely fantastic. We've got missiles on the inner section towards the bottom, a moving arm section that connects it into the forearm, and this thing connects perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. And to me, the best thing about this is that the tomahawk can pop in here for storage, but it can also pop down here, lower down on the shield, attach those beams, and that is glorious. Awesome. Lastly then, in here, we've got a 144th scale man himself, and that's Char. So before we actually move on to the articulation, I have a confession. <laughs> yeah, I broke the shoulder joint. So basically I had this guy finished before the unboxing went live, so I happened to miss all your warning comments down in the comments sections where you basically told me, don't break it, and I broke it. What actually happened is I made a speed build video of this, so when I was building it, I had my arms fully outstretched. So imagine trying to build a model kit where your arms completely outstretched. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. However, it's not in vain as it was pretty easy to repair, so now it's all good. Well, sort of. So everyone beware, if you are going to get one of these while building it, be careful. This thing's shoulders are akin to the original Master Grade Sin and Jew's waist joint. Basically, get it right the first time, or you're fucked. Anyway, onto the actual articulation, and this might take a while. So we've got the head all the way down and all the way up. We've got side to side as well, and this awesome cockpit opening action in the head. 
This section of the torso moves independently, moving the head around. That is so damn cool. Top of that with the normal forward and back at the waist. And we've got what is essentially a hovering joint in the waist that allows it to move side to side massively side to side. As for the shoulder joint, once again, be wary with this as it is a little bit delicate towards the bottom, but we have a whole lot going on in here. This moves out and in. We've got a forward and back as well as the standard up and down. Great joint right here. At the shoulder, this armor section can split downwards. This whole front section here can swing up. Same goes for the back as well as the part that attaches to the shoulder. Moving along onto the arm and up at the shoulder here, we've got full rotation. When it's attached, we've up and down and a massive extension upwards. Even with the shoulder armor on, this really doesn't get in the way. The designing of this kit is amazing. As for the bend at the elbow, when we do bend the elbow, this section here pulls out. We've, we've got these two piston-like sections, but the bend itself is fantastic. If that's not good enough, this little section of armor can flip up, unlocking a little bit more length. And it feels like this gives it a little bit more of a bend as well. The armor section at the wrist can pop out showing some more of those foil stickers inside. And there is what the articulation is like at the articulated wrists. Of course, remember the standard fists and the standard widespread open hands don't feature this. They're just standard ball joints. The front skirting can flip up, pivot side to side, and the entire skirting section can disconnect and pull out entirely. The side skirt can flip up, swing back as well as swing forward, and this little section of armor can split open as well and kinda looks like a face. You know it's a top quality gunpla when the butt flap moves. As well as up and down, these two sections here can split out like this, part of the heat dissipation gimmick. No heat included. While messing around with the articulation on this, I noticed this little section in here which looks like it should have articulation, right? That looks like it should slide up and down through those grooves, but it doesn't. When you take it off, you notice the reason why. This little hole here connects onto the peg in there, stopping it from moving up and down, which is really strange. You can see that it could if that wasn't there. So that means there's only one thing I can do. Time to mutilate Sazabi in the butt. And there we go, it actually does work. There's a modifiable part on this. I guess you'd be trading some stability, not much at all, for a little bit more of an ab crunch. That is pretty cool. Not mentioned anywhere in the manual though. Moving along and at the waist, you've got those waist joints that can rock back and forward, swing back and forward a little bit. Sazbi has absolutely no problem pulling off the full splits. Pretty much full rotation up here. For bulky Gundam, that knee bend is incredible and we've got two points of articulation at the knee. The shin armor can move both out and in as well as this huge motion of up and down. This side segment with the vernier can pop out as well as move up and out. The set of verniers under here can move slightly in and out. At the foot, we've got a whole lot going on. Full range of motion side to side. We've got flexion and extension at that point. We've got a bend at the toes, a bend midway. This little armor section can move up and down. And even at that, we've got articulation at this heel segment here. The amount going on here is insane. All in all, the articulation on this thing is beyond epic. It is absolute perfection incarnate. As for the verdict for this thing, it's perfect. Full stop. This right here is an absolute masterpiece and honestly the greatest plastic model I've ever laid my hands on. I'd give this a gold dokoro, but that would be doing it an absolute disservice. This thing right here gets something I don't even have a symbol for. It is Gundarium tier. As good as it can get. One thing I will mention once again is the shoulder joint. If you try to twist this into place, you can absolutely rip out the joint it attaches to. So push it on and push it on straight. Just be careful. Not like me. This definitely isn't a problem with the joint, it's just user error. But it is delicate, so be careful. But on the whole, from me, this gets a solid 10 out of 10 for every aspect. Looks, detail, articulation, great accessories, build quality, everything. This kit feels like and is like nothing else. It is hands down the best real grade. It beats the master grade Sazabi in every aspect but size. And this thing right here is absolutely perfect right out of the box. Whatever you do, don't get put off by how crazy awesome this thing seems. The build is actually very simple. Of course, beware the shoulders. And literally, it took me only about three or four hours to build, and I was filming the build starting and stopping all the time. This is a deceptively simple kit. 
If you're only going to get yourself one Gunpla this year, or one Gunpla ever, make sure it's this kit right here. Of course, as usual, there is a link in the description if you want to get one of your own, and this channel right here would literally be on hiatus for the last nine months if it wasn't for those awesome guys over at Hobby Link Japan. They're literally the lifeblood of the channel right now. So once again, there is a link down there. But as always, thanks for watching, make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and of course, I'll see you next time.